Hello and welcome to today's Who Should I Call Today webinar. My name is Kayla Priest and I am your host for today. I'm joined by my co-host Mike Davis who is live with us in the chat. So if you are here this live, continue to ask great questions. And if you're watching us later in our recording gallery, I hope that you'll learn everything there is to learn that our live listeners did today as well about prospecting, following up, and successfully using the sync method. Now, when we talk about the sync method, that's going to be how do I make sure I'm calling the right people at the right time? How do I make sure I'm calling the people who are going to help me set appointments to convert those leads into clients? And then how once I've communicated with them, we maybe are in the nurture process, how do I make sure I'm following up with the right people at the right time? That is going to be everything that we cover today, as well as throwing in some stats from some different um, what, uh, studies is the word I was looking for. Some stats or some studies that kind of helped us figure out um, exactly what are the great times to call? How many times should we call? In other words, best practices. So we'll be sharing kind of the why behind the what that we talk about today. So let's go ahead and talk about the type of leads that we're discussing on today's webinar. And those are going to be internet leads. And so internet leads are exactly what they sound like. They are leads that did not come to us through a referral. They did not come to us um, because they're a past client or they're from, from our sphere. These are people that registered for our website from the internet. So in other words, I went to Google and I typed in homes for sale in Marietta, Georgia or homes for sale in 30067. And I saw the results in that Google search. I clicked on an ad in there, came to the website, found the house I wanted to look at. When I click to view it, I get that registration prompt. I put in all my information and then I can see the house. So in other words, Listen to all those steps the lead had to go through, that's six or seven steps. So whenever I hear people say, well, I'm afraid to call because I think that they don't want to talk to anyone, or I think they don't need my help, or I don't know what I would want to say, these are warm leads. These are people who actually signed up saying they were interested in this information. Now, occasionally, will you pick up the phone and call someone who maybe was a little upset that day <laughs> and maybe isn't the kindest? Absolutely. Uh, huge um, influential book for me was Go For No. Um, you'll never know what could happen if you don't try. So we can't be worried about these outliers, these people who are going to be angry or upset. We just say, great, I got to know and we move on to the next. Now, for people that we call and they maybe hang up on us, what are we going to do with them? For people we call and have a great conversation with, what are we going to do with them? We're going to cover all of that on today's webinar. Now, I mentioned that we're going to be covering the sync method. And to show that, I'm actually in a sync site. This is a live site, but it's mainly used for testing. In other words, at sync, we will put in, as you can see, the second lead is Kayla filter test. I needed to run a little test on some filters. So I created a lead for that. So you might see some um, higher likelihood of bad contact information in here, maybe some weird names. Um, but that is what that is from. This, however, is going to be the same format as your sync site that you work on. And what we're going to be talking about in this site is something that everyone should already have in their platform. And those are our saved filters. Now, not to um, tease and not show that right away, but saved filters are simply filters that are comprised of our filters and pipelines. And if you set it up that way, labels. In other words, do you find yourself doing the same filter set over and over? Meaning um, I host a lot of open houses and I wanna in invite people to my open houses. So I'm gonna filter by favorite city. I'm gonna filter by median price point. I'm gonna filter by lead type of buyer. So in other words, you come here and you select all those filters over and over again. A saved filter gives you the option to save all of those into one click. So what Sync did to help you know who to call today was create a set of saved filters with the criteria we know makes someone good to call that day. 
It's super simple. So if you were to open your safe filter on your site, unless you or someone on the team has deleted them or changed them, you should have just as we see here, P1, 2, 3, and 4, and F1, 2, and 3. Now we've created an F4 filter and we'll show that later, but if you don't already have that, there's nothing wrong. We'll show you how to create your own saved filters in addition to these we've already created. Now today, when it comes to P filters, that's where we're going to start. We're only going to be talking about P1, 2, and 3. And that's because those are our daily call filters. So what does P stand for, do we think? It stands for prospecting. So these are leads that we have not already spoken to. And these are the leads that we are saying, this is a good time to prospect on these leads today. So before I even click into P1 and start talking about what the criteria is and what to do with them, let's talk about the right time of day to use these filters. So I promised some um, study data. So my first tip here is time blocking based on the time that leads are most likely to answer the phone. Now, there was a study that was done several years ago by InsideSales.com, and they partnered with a scientist from MIT, and they ran a study for three years um, looking at internet leads and how they responded to agents giving them calls. And they found that there are two hours of the day where a lead is more likely to answer the phone. And so write this down if you're um, wanting to refer back to this and start time blocking. The number one time of day was between 4 and 5 p.m. Now, this is Monday through Friday, but I do know some people that call on the weekends and have great um, success with that. But we're going to be mainly talking about Monday through Friday. So Monday through Friday, 4 to 5 p.m. The second time of day that was best released to answer the phone was between 8 and 9 a.m. And so what we have found is that agents who make a, a priority to call during those two hours of the day have the most success in the platform. And why is that? It's because prospecting is a numbers game. So the more dials we make, the more connections we make, the more appointments we set, the more closings we have. So it's a numbers game. And I'm not saying that we want to throw everyone into some triple line dialer and just blow through the list of calls. That's not it at all. We can use the sync dialer. It's a single line dialer. You can speed up the dialing process by calling from the sync agent app. But this is simply looking at the lead, giving them a call. If we have a conversation, great. If we don't, great. We move on to the next person. But we find that agents that are calling at least an hour a day, and so that could be 30 minutes in the morning and 30 minutes in the afternoon. It could be in the morning on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, and in the afternoon on Tuesday and Thursday. It's whatever works for your schedule. But the priority should be to find some time during those hours of 8 to 9 a.m. and 4 to 5 p.m. And you can even extend that out a little bit. You could try maybe 9 to 10. You could try, you know, 5 to 6. Try different things. And if you're getting a better response rate, if you're having better success during those times, absolutely use those times. In fact, at Sync University, on day three, we do a power hour where everyone um, actually calls their Sync leads and sets appointments. And we, without fail, every single week, or every single month, I should say, when we um, have Sync University, without fail, we get at least a 33% contact to appointment set. Now that's probably because they are using the things that they've learned during um, Sync U, including the third day, which is all about scripting. But they get a contact to appointment set ratio of 33%. And that happens on a Thursday at like 2 p.m. So I say that to let you know that you don't have to be so rigid to call between eight and nine and four to five every single day. You can change it up. In fact, that's why we like to see people calling in both of those windows, eight to nine and four to five, because if we call in the morning, we're catching our morning people. If we call in the afternoon, we're catching our non-morning people. So we're never calling at the same time every single day and wondering why we're not getting great results because if we call at the same time every single day and we never vary it at all, we're gonna be missing those people who are always unavailable during that time. So let's move forward thinking of this time and let's pretend that it is tomorrow morning and we have decided that we're gonna call for 30 minutes in the morning from 8.15 to 
So at eight o'clock, I would be doing a role play with my team to get myself warmed up. I'd be listening to some music. I'd be standing, drinking some coffee, whatever it is to get myself into the zone. Um, I'm going to feel confident about my script because I've been to the webinars. I've been to Sync University. And then when 815 hits, what do I do? That is when you're going to come to your platform and you're going to work your P1, 2, and 3 filters. Now, I like to think of these as a list. So this is simply my prospecting to-do list, meaning I'm going to click into one, do what I need to do in it, cross it off, and move on to the next. So it's A15 in our hypothetical tomorrow. I'm going to click into this filter and call these leads. But let's talk about why they're in the P1 filter. What's the criteria here? I'm going to point out a couple of things that'll be really helpful. There's no pop quiz here about what does each filter have within it, because you're always going to be able to look in the filter and know. So not only do we have a title here in this black box, it says saved filter P1 call now. It's giving us the title and what to do. But it also has this little blue bubble beneath that that says pipeline new lead. Now, anytime you see a blue bubble up there in these saved filters, that's in what in the tech world is called a breadcrumb. So a breadcrumb is kind of like Hansel and Gretel. They drop the breadcrumbs to be able to find their way back. And in the um, tech world, breadcrumbs help us figure out how we got there. So just a little kind of backwards. But basically, the breadcrumb lets us know what's the criteria for the saved filter. And we can see in this case, it's new lead, pipeline stage, new lead. So all of these leads have one thing in common in P1, and that is pipeline stage of new lead. And as we scroll through, looking at the pipeline column here, we can see that that's true. Now, is it possible that some of these leads, the agent has called them, but forgot to change the pipeline stage? Very possible. Is it someone that maybe um, came in overnight and you didn't see them until the next morning? Absolutely. It's all possible. What we want to do is look at this lead give them that first initial phone call, move the pipeline stage as necessary, add notes, add reminders, save search, whatever is in the process that we'll talk about the rest of the webinar, and then move on to the next one. So essentially, I would call Aaron. If Aaron answered and hung up on me, I would move them to attempted contact. If Aaron answered and we had a great conversation, I'm going to talk about that process a little bit later. But in other words, I'm simply calling the lead, having the conversation I'm able to have, moving them to the appropriate pipeline stage, and then moving on. So as you can see here, there are quite a few leads in this P1 filter. Now, if you have been unfamiliar with this process up until today, yours may look similar. Um, and you may have some that are in those scenarios I mentioned earlier, someone that just came in overnight or earlier while you were in an appointment, maybe someone that's been in there a while, but you have not been using this process, so you missed them. So if you do have a bigger P1 filter, it's absolutely fine. You're going to have to play catch up a little bit, but that's okay. We've all been there. So the good thing to do here is just break it up and do a certain number of dials out of your P1 filter a day, I'd say get caught up to people that came in in the past week first, but then just start making your first dials out from there. And you can call, you know, a page a day or as many as you feel comfortable with, but you just want to get caught up because the focus and the goal of P1 is to have it at zero by the end of the day. So that way, when you sign in the next morning and you start your morning call block, you're picking up with just the people that came in overnight. And when you call in the afternoon, you're calling the people who came in during the day that you missed and couldn't make that first initial dial too quickly. Now that leads me to our second piece of data from that Inside Sales and MIT study, and that was speed to lead. So I feel like we've all heard of the concept of speed to lead, calling leads really quickly. But along the way, we've gotten scared of calling leads really quickly. Um, we feel like it's going to be creepy or they're not expecting a phone call and we don't really know what we're going to say. And so we said, well, it'll be better if I just wait a little bit. 
But what this study actually found is that leads were more likely to be qualified when they were called in the first five minutes. And the percentage of leads that were qualified or even answered severely dropped off, um, even starting at like 15 and 30 minutes and out at an hour, it was non-existent. So you have a much higher chance of getting the lead on the phone if you call in the first five minutes. Now, that being said, I know that sometimes they come in at midnight or you're in another meeting. And so I'm not saying to call leads at midnight or quit, stop your meeting and give them a call. Those are people that will pick up when we're done with our meeting or first thing the next morning. But whenever possible, it's important to call super quickly. We actually also know that leads, I believe the study tells us that 30% of internet leads are never um, contacted at all. So there's never a contact attempt made at all. And those 30% of people could be great viable clients that could become repeat clients of ours. So we just never know what's gonna happen. We don't know the situation. So you want to call everyone, even if they look like they're out of area, even if they look like they're in a price point that you don't like to work at. Wouldn't we want to be the connector that can put that lead with a person who could actually help them? And then in return, maybe we get a little referral fee. You know, so we just call everyone. We don't want to cherry pick, call them all. Now, just because you're more likely to get people to answer when you call in the first five minutes doesn't mean that they're all going to answer in the first five minutes. And so that's when we have to put on our persistence hat and we have to be persistent in calling these people. But let me show you on a, um, on a test lead down here. So here's a test lead that came in. If I called Bob, and he did not answer, and I moved him to attempted contact. And I use my little refresh button here. You'll notice that Bob is no longer here. So this P1 filter is not for persistence. This is for getting that first phone call out. Our next two P filters are going to be for persistence. So once we've emptied our P1 filter out, I'm gonna cross it off and I'm going to click into P2. Now, Bob is not here because he doesn't fit the criteria just yet, but this is where you'll start to see people who meet the following criteria. They have registered sometime in the last 14 days. So these are newer registrations and they have a pipeline stage of attempted contact, meaning we've tried at least that first call, maybe more, and we have not had a successful conversation yet. So these are newer, uncontacted leads. So why do we think it's great to focus our prospecting time on newer, uncontacted leads? We know that leads start their home search on the internet, meaning that most people who are doing a search on the internet for homes do not have an agent. But what we do know is that leads sign up when they do start that search on anywhere between five to seven different home search sites. And that could be uh, your sync site, it could be Zillow, it could be realtor.com, it could be a brokerage site. They're looking everywhere because they don't really understand that um, the MLS is the MLS and those are the homes that are gonna be available on the internet. So they try different sites thinking that it's gonna give them access to more homes to view. So we know that if other agents are doing what they're supposed to do, they're calling quickly. And so if there is a lead that is newer and uncontacted, we want you to be the first agent that they speak to. Because I cannot remember the exact um, study this came from, but there is something that I think is somewhere in the 80% range. Um, typically uh, leads work with the first agent that they speak to. So we want you to be the first agent that they speak to. Of course, when you learn the great Sync scripting at Sync University or scripting webinar, um, you'll have an even better chance of converting them into a client. But we want you to be the ones that call quickly and get the business. So that is what P2 helps us do. Now, my favorite um, piece of data from that Inside Sales and MIT study is all about persistence. And this is what the study told us. It told us that leads are most likely to answer on the sixth dial, but even at the sixth dial, it's about 90% to 
So what that means is not every single person is going to answer in that first one to six dials. So we have to be as persistent as it takes. And as long as someone is in these filters, it means they're worth your time today. So we're just going to give the, the ring as long as they're in this filter. Now that normally brings up a question of Kayla, if I'm going to be calling someone daily, as long as they're in this filter, that's a lot of voicemails. Do I leave one? And the answer to that is no. Uh, we don't want to see you leave a voicemail because you are going to be making these frequent phone calls. Now, I know some people live and die by their voicemails, and that's absolutely fine, but we just don't want to leave them in the first six, even up to 10 dials. Now, I fully believe in that saying that the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a different result. So I'm not saying to never leave a voicemail. What I'm saying is that we leave one on maybe the 10th dial and we never going to say, let me know if there's something I can do to help with your home search. Hope to talk to you soon. There's going to be something really exciting that we're talking to them about. There's a great new home that came on the market in Marietta, if that's where they're looking. Um, I don't think it'll last long, but I really want to get you in to see it. Um, let me know how you want me to send that to you. I can call tech or I can email or text. Let me know what you prefer. Here's my number. Now, keep in mind that you can also be utilizing text and email during this time, but I like to automate that because I want my time to be focused on making connections with people, which I do over the phone. So phone calls are not the only thing we're relying on, but I like to see agents automating texting and emailing, which you can do with auto tracks, behavioral messaging, and AI. But I want my time to be focused on making my phone calls and setting appointments. Now, that's our P2 filter. And of course, there's no one for me to show you here because this is a test site again. So there's not very much activity. But these are leads that are in attempted contact that have registered in the last 14 days. And the same thing goes that went in P1. I'm just walking down my list and making my calls. Once I've done that, I'm going to cross off P2 and move on to P3. Now we have a new set of criteria up here. We can see that P3 is telling us to call active. In other words, call these active leads. So what makes them active? Let's look at our breadcrumbs. The registration date, custom date range. Doesn't tell us much, but I'm here to demystify. The custom date range is 15 to 5,000 days ago. So registration date is between two weeks up to 5,000 days ago. So this filter gets richer and richer the longer your sync site is open because it also on the flip side is looking at login date. So for those leads that are registering now that say they don't want to buy a house or list their house until next year and we're nurturing them over that year, it may be easy for them to slip through the cracks. But in here, they'll come back up when they get active again. So older, active, but still uncontacted. So if our pipeline stage is attempted contact, that means we've tried to call and they didn't answer or flip side, they answered, we had a great conversation. When I started following up, they ghosted me, or in other words, quit answering, quit responding, didn't show up to an appointment. So three pieces of criteria in P3, Older, active, uncontacted. So here, let's look at Cindy up top. And it looks like she's got an invalid number because of our little yellow triangle here. But that looks like it could be a valid number to me. Um, for example, if it's the right num number of numbers, <laughs> um, if it has um, like a zip code typo, like if their zip code was 512, but in here it's 502, I might try just to dial 512 and see if that was really it. We want to try to call everyone because we can click and change those icons when they're incorrect. But I would still try to email this person. But remember, this is mostly a test site, so we see a little bit more of bad information. So we also can see when this lead registered 272 days ago. 
but I'm going to change the way this is sorted so it's at our default. So the default sort is registration date most recent. So now I have Emma up top who came in 216 days ago. I'll show you how to change the sort in just a moment to show you some tips and tricks I like it to use in this P3 filter. And then we can also see the last login. So we can see Emma was here 19 days ago for the 30th time. And so she fits all this criteria. Um, registered between two weeks and 500 days ago, last logged in at least 30 days ago, and attempted contact. So these are leads that are older, active, uncontacted. Awesome time to connect with them because their time frame is probably coming up from when they said they were interested. So let's look at, at that really quickly. Emma told us when she came in that she wanted to move sometime that's in the past. But if she's still actively logging in, I'm curious, did something change? Maybe they said they wanted to move a little sooner, but something happened and they decided to wait. So again, we never cherry pick. Just because her time frame says past, it doesn't mean that that's still true. Now, if we want to change up the order of the leads in this filter so we can call them in a different order from day to day, that's absolutely fine. And I'll show you my two favorite ways to do that. So you'll notice that all of these columns that have a little triangle beneath them, when I hover over that, they turn blue. And that means I can actually use them to change my sort in order, um, or in other words, the order that the leads are showing in. So here's my number one favorite way to sort P3 when I'm doing my prospecting calls. Number one is last touch. So I'm going to click my last touch column. And I want to sort by last call, least recent. So in other words, if I know that I'm short on time and I'm not going to be able to get through every single lead today, then I can sort by last call, least recent, and start with the people who I called further in the past. Now I'll show you really quickly. Brooke up here has valid uh, phone and email, but has unsubscribed from text and email. That does not apply to calling. When the lead signs up on the site and signs the site's terms and conditions, they sign that it is okay to be called. So this is only unsubscribing from text and email. Again, I don't cherry pick, I call everyone. Now, if I get on the phone and someone says, don't ever call me again, then I'm giving them to someone else on my team to try. But I personally won't call them again because that's what they requested. So let's go back to registration date most recent. This is our default. Again, if you've never sorted by anything, then that's the default that you're going to see. Registration date most recent. Well, let's talk about the second way that we can change the order of the leads in here to make our phone calls. And that's going to be by last login, most recent. Calling the super active people. That's where we have Cindy up top who was here two hours ago for the 71st time. And she told us 272 days ago that she was gonna be ready around this time. So she's an awesome person to give a call to today. All of them are, but I'm gonna start with her today. But we never wanna use the same sort over and over again because it makes it too easy to miss people. So just change it up sometimes. Sometimes use the, the default for registration date. Sometimes use the um, last call least recent. Sometimes use last login most recent. Just change it up and see what you get the best results with. So those are our P filters. That's P1, 2, and 3. Those are our daily call filters. So that is what we are using to help prospect and get more people contacted. So let's talk about that now. Let's talk about what happens when someone is contacted. And I'm going to just use a test lead for this, um, just again, to make sure that I'm not messing with anything that could be real. We're going to throw my Kayla filter test lead back into um, new lead status. And we're gonna walk through the process of adding a note, adding a reminder, all that good stuff. So let's say we give Kayla a call and she doesn't answer totally fine. I'm moving her to attempted contact. Now I'm having to do that manually because I did not call her with the dialer or the sync agent app. 
If you're using the Sync Dialer or the Sync Agent app, it will automatically move leads to attempted contact for you when you make the first call. From there, I'm going to add a quick note saying that I called and I didn't get an answer. And you'll see it's already marked as a phone call for me. I only have to change it over to general if it's something not pertaining to a phone call. I don't need to touch anything else at this point. I'm gonna just save it and move on to my next lead. Now let's say I called Kayla later that day, still no answer, totally fine. I'm gonna add another note called, didn't get an answer. Now let's say I call her the next day and she answers and hangs up on me. I hate that. We're gonna leave her in attempted contact and just add a note called, hang up, move on. Now let's say I call back the very next day and I get Kayla on the phone and she's in a better mood that day. And we have a great conversation. And I learn the three W's about her. And that's going to be what she's looking for. In other words, the criteria, beds, baths, city, um, you know, location. Um, does she wanna be in an HOA or not? Do they wanna pool? Whatever the features that they share with you are. When they're wanting to move or list, I should say, when um, time frame and then finally their motivation or their why so our three w's are going to be uh, what when and why and the motivation is key so even though we do say we want to know what they're looking for we don't want to just say how many bedrooms great how many bathrooms great where you know what city are you thinking great do you want this or that that's not what we want to focus on. We want to focus on the motivation. And that's why I highly, highly recommend that you attend the conversion and scripting webinar. It's every other Monday. More details at synccommunity.com slash webinars. You can also watch recordings at synccommunity.com slash recordings. Or join us at Sync University if you want to join us live. We're going to be in, I believe, 11 cities next year, all across the US and once in Canada. Um, you need to learn how to change our scripting to not focus on the what, but focus on the why, digging into the motivation. Why are you selling now? Why are you buying now? Why do you want that feature? Dig in deep, find out their why. When we know what's going on with that person, now we can consider them contacted. So I'm going to move this lead to this contacted pipeline stage. And now I'm gonna add a note, just like I did before, only this time, I need some more details because this is basically going to become the manual for this lead. And so you'll notice I just took the corner of this box and when I hover over it, I get this little up and down arrow. And if I drag that, it makes the box nice and big for me to type a bigger note in. So I'm going to put the what here. You'll notice that I'm putting this in a list form. I personally like this. This is a tip from me to you um, because it makes it a lot easier to come back and read later as opposed to a big long paragraph. We can also put in here details that we found out, job, um, are they married, do they have a partner, children, hobbies, um, any little details that you find that'll be in, you know, helpful as you're working with that lead. Now I can also utilize this pin button. And what checking this pin box does is turn this into a pinned note. And what that means is it's pinned up to the top of the leads notes. So even if other things get added later, this is always up at the top. And anything new and important that you need to add to this, you can come back in and edit this note and keep that one kind of, again, manual for working that lead right up at the top. If you've been listening for a while, this used to be called um, a sticky note, but it's now just called a pinned note. Same thing though. We can also notify other people on the team, a team lead, for example, a listing agent, a mortgage um, lender um, or partner who might work with your team. You can tag them and then they get notified that they've been tagged in a note and maybe need to follow up with this person. So now that we have successfully contacted them, maybe we set an appointment with them. At that point, we would have moved them to appointment set. But most likely, you're maybe nurturing them over their time frame. So now we need to stop thinking, I'm going to call them every day. And more, I'm going to call them once a month to build a relationship so they know, like, and trust me. 
I'm going to call them once a month so they know, like, and trust me. And when it is time for them to make a decision to list or, or buy, I'm going to be there at the right time to set that appointment with them. So we have to think follow up. We have to think, be reminded to follow up. So here in my quick actions menu where I've been adding all my notes, right beneath is a new reminder. So we're going to add a reminder. Now there are three reminder types here. We can be reminded to call, we can be reminded to email, or we can be reminded to do something else. Most of our follow-ups are going to be calls, but it's important, I think, to ask the lead how they prefer for you to check in with them. Maybe they um, do shift work, and so they really prefer text during the day so they can reply you know, later in the night, whatever the situation is. Ask, do you want me to call, text, or email you? Just know that um, if you don't ask, call is always best because we continue to build the relationship a little easier via the phone. So then we have some details here. Some people just to kind of share things that people like to do. Um, I've seen some agents that like to copy and paste the first note into the details box here. Um, that's because this will pop up on the date and time that you specify down here below. And so when that pops up, you may be somewhere else. And so it's nice to have a little bit of a reminder um, of what you may want to talk about because it's nice to you know, call and ask if there, anything has changed, how's their home search going, but it's also nice to be able to drop in some details so they feel like you really remembered what um, you spoke about. Other times people will just type in a few quick details here when they're adding the note, but it's up to you. Just need to have some form of details here. So if we spoke today, um, November 3rd. We're gonna be looking to speak sometime around December 3rd. Super easy. We want to be sometime in the next 30 days. Now, if December 3rd were like a Saturday and maybe you think I don't want to, you know, be doing my reminders on Saturdays, we can, you know, plus or minus a couple of days to make it work. If it's a holiday, for example, plus or minus a couple of days to make it work. My tip here for the time, I am very easily distracted. And so I don't like to have random um, reminders popping up all throughout the day because I lose my focus. So what I like to do is have all of my reminders hit sometime in the morning, say 8 a.m. And I know I just have some time during the day to get that done. And then we save. So now this lead, Kayla, we've marked as contacted. We have, clicking into their profile, added a note. You can see it's pinned here at the top. And in our reminders tab, we have added a reminder. Now I have one final thing I need to do for this newly contacted lead, and that's going to be to adjust the leads saved search. Now, during this phone call, you've learned what the lead is looking for. We need to make sure that the saved search reflects that. And so what that does is making sure the saved search reflects what the lead is looking for, then impacts the property alerts that get sent to the lead daily by default. We can always change the frequency. But the saved search adjustment is crucial because it lets the lead know that you listen to them, you understood what they're looking for, and it makes the site stickier to them because they're going to be getting those property alerts, seeing homes that match what they look for. They'll be clicking those, coming back to the site so we can track what they look at, when they looked at it, did they log in, how many homes did they look at, et cetera. So what you're going to do to adjust the saved search is come over to this activities tab Click where it says saved. Here's the saved search that's currently active. But if we want to edit it, we'll simply click edit. And I really only want you focusing on this top part right here. That is the location. Typing in the location, letting it open up here. You can see we've got gray breadcrumbs here. So we can even take away. The beds and baths are here. So we can adjust those.
we can adjust the price point. Now you know your price point. So if someone tells you they think they're looking somewhere around like 425, you know kind of how you want to judge this up or down. We can put in the property type here. We can also here say that we only want them to get active homes in the property alerts. If we took this away or there was nothing here, they would be getting any statuses that are available on the site. So probably active and pending, but that totally depends on your MLS. Now, this is really all we need for leads that we're nurturing. If you scroll down, you're going to see that there are additional features here, but I really don't like to use them because when we get too specific, um, we either A, um, miss out on homes that the lead actually would have liked because people don't typically end up buying exactly what they said they wanted. Um, and it can also mean that the number of homes that they actually have to send are so small that it's not very engaging because they get an email so infrequently from you. But here we have the basic criteria, which is enough. Now I can click save to save it. In fact, I shouldn't say I can, I need to click save to save these changes. And then I can pop over to my search results tab. Here are all the results plotted out on the map. And then I can scroll down and actually see the matches here. I could even be super engaging and select a few of these just by clicking on the uh, photo and send an email right out to the lead from here. Uh, you don't have to take this step, but it's here if you want it. Otherwise, if we don't send this out, then the lead will get these property alerts based on the engagement that's set here. So it does default to daily, but we also recommend this Tuesday, Thursday, if it's been personalized, if someone is getting close to making a decision on their um, purchase, then I would move it to a little more frequently than that. Now I do happen out of the corner of my eye to see a question about how I got to the lead screen a little bit ago. So I'm gonna click back to our dashboard. All I did to get the leads profile to open up was click on their name and that opens up the leads profile. I'll also point out that this is where you can see how many calls have been made to this person. So we know when it's time to leave a voicemail, for example. We can see if they are mostly on their phone or desktop. We can see when they typically check their email. That's when the saved search actually gets sent out. So this is the kind of the hub of all the lead information. And then to adjust the lead saved search, I just clicked where it said one saved and then clicked edit. So that is our process for P filters and prospecting for leads. Now, if you think back to just a few moments ago when we set a reminder, I said that there were three reminder types, call, email, and other. Those directly correspond to our three F filters, F1, 2, and 3, call, email, and other. So if I have a call reminder set on a lead and it is either due today or overdue, again, just reading from our breadcrumb, the reminder is either due today and overdue, and it was for a call type, the lead will be here. We can see that these leads do have reminders on them and they are overdue, remember, test site. <laughs> so this one is overdue by 24 days, overdue by 46, et cetera. And I've got some lag because my mouse is randomly drawing on my screen there. So that is where you can see what the reminder um, date or due date was. If you are calling a lead from this F1 filter, this is to follow up. So remember, we can click into their profile. We can go to the reminders tab here. And this is where we will mark this as complete. And it's also where we can add another reminder for our next follow up. So if we spoke to them today, we follow up on December 3rd, we're gonna be following up again. If we haven't set the appointment already, 
around January 3rd, February 3rd, et cetera, et cetera, until they become the client. And F2 and F3 work the same way. It's just for those other reminder types. It's for people we said we wanted to email, and it's for people who said that we needed to do something else, that other type. So the F filters are F1, 2, and 3, and those are daily reminders. Now, remember, you will get a notification either via text, um, email, or push notification from the app, but you always have kind of that full overview look of the reminders that are due today. We have created this F4 filter called danger. And if you'll take a look at our um, breadcrumbs here, we have a reminder that's not set for contacted leads. So the reason this is called a danger filter and why I'm gonna show you how to create it is because these are leads that are either A, in danger of falling through the cracks because we contacted them, but we did not set a reminder for them. And you can also consider that these are a danger to your paycheck because these are contacted leads that we have no follow-up plan for. So let me show you the process to create this danger filter real quick. And then know that you can use that process to create any other saved filter that you want to. So I'm going to use my reset all button to go back to my default. Here's my regular uh, dashboard screen. And so let's create that saved filter together. I like to start with pipelines if I'm using one. So I'm going to say, show me my contacted leads. But then on top of that, I want to stack a second filter. And I'm going to say, I want to see leads whose next reminder date is not set. And if you need a refresher for this, remember that this is going to be uploaded to synccommunity.com slash recordings. And we also have tons of past recordings there as well. So you can always go find this, or you can use the sync help center, help.syncpro.com. And this will walk you through it as well. So we've got our pipeline stages contacted and next reminder date not set. So now how do I save this? So it's an easy one click saved filter for me for next time. Here in my filters list, I'm going to scroll down to the bottom underneath the last filter, which is time zone. I've got a show fewer filters, but below that, this is what I'm looking for. Save current filters. This is where we can add the name. And now when I open my saved filters, there it is. So when I create this, it's just for me. Uh, no one else on the team will see it unless I open the filter, click my little pencil icon by the title and mark it as public. This is also where you could change the title if you made a typo, for example. But once we make it public, now everyone on the site can use it. So if you do wanna make something public, I would suggest that the team leader site owner handles that so we don't have a bunch of filters that um, are all for the same thing. But if you don't take that step, it's just private, just to you, the agent that created it. And because I don't want this to get super messy, I'm gonna actually delete it. But that is your process for creating your own saved filters. Again, you can use them for any sort of filter set that you find yourself using over and over again. All right, y'all, that is our sync method for prospecting and following up. So a very quick recap, we need to make sure we're calling daily from our P filters. Time block, 8 a.m. to 9 a.m., uh, 4 p.m. to 5 p.m. A huge thing you'll hear me say if you join any of my other trainings, I say it every time. I believe that 30 minutes is better than no minutes. So don't get discouraged if you say, well, I, I'm not gonna be able to do a full hour today. Something's better than nothing. So you just have to make the commitment to yourself right now that when I make these time blocks, these are going to be my appointments to myself. I'm not gonna schedule anything else on top of it. I'm gonna make this a priority. So you can even consider that P stands for prospecting and priority. Make sure you're doing your follow-ups. I recommend doing another um, call, uh, time block for that. So maybe say 2 p.m. every day or whatever time works for you. Remember to do your correct steps when you're calling your leads. In other words, moving your pipeline stage as necessary. 
setting your um, notes so they have the right information, adding your reminders, and then actually following up on them. And then, of course, adjusting your saved search based on what the lead has told you. That's the only way that they're going to start to get property alerts that are really clued in and geared into what they told you they're looking for. So if you do this process, I know that you will have success because it's proven to be successful. We've been in business now for a little over 10 years, which is super exciting. We've learned these best practices by paying attention to the studies and also to our very successful clients that have been able to grow really um, successful careers and big teams uh, just from using processes just like this. So if you do need help while you're doing this process at all, know that we're always here. Um, I'm going to show you where you can grab the information to call tech support or email tech support. They're not just for when things are broken. They're also for, um, is this working the right way? Am I doing this the right way? You can always call or email and then you also have access to the help center help.seekpro.com available 24 7. Um, please reach out and let us know if you ever need anything because that's our job we are here to help before we officially wrap up though i want to just pitch to mike are there any questions that we need to talk about that we did not get to yet no we got everything covered in the chat some good questions today Awesome. Thank you, Mike, so much. Uh, I will also pitch really quickly our upcoming webinars. Um, join us weekly. We have sessions most Wednesdays and occasional Thursdays. If you want to see the full schedule, check out synccommunity.com slash webinars. Remember that this and tons of other recordings are available at synccommunity.com slash recordings. And then, of course, if you are ready to join us live, we would love to have you at Sync University. Again, check out Sync Community for that, synccommunity.com slash syncuniversity. We have a class um, next week in Phoenix. We have a sold out one the next week in Chicago. We'll be in Atlanta in December. And then 2022, we kick off our nationwide tour where we will be in 11 different cities, um, including once in Canada, which we're very excited about. So thank you so much for being here with us today. Um, Phoenix for next uh, week, still some room. So please join us, check out synccommunity.com slash syncuniversity. That's a mouthful um, to grab a ticket. We still have a little bit of room in Phoenix. Uh, thank you so much. Hope you have a really great rest of the day, a great week, and let us know if there's anything we can ever do to help. Hopefully we'll see you on another webinar very soon. Uh, see you next time. Bye everybody.